My name is Angeline Nelson, and I am the Director of Community Learning and Engagement at the University of Winnipeg. So what that means is I run the Weechewaganock Learning Center here at the University of Winnipeg. And uh, the, the Weechewaganock Learning Center was founded um, in 2006, um, so a little over 12 years ago. Um, and what our center aims to achieve is to provide services to the community in which we are involved in, uh, or in which we are situated in. And so we're situated in the West End. Um, we're situated in the Federal Riding uh, Winnipeg Centre, um, which recently was ranked number three out of all of Canada as having the highest rates of child poverty. And so I think what that really speaks to is the amount of work that we have to do, both as an inst institution and as a center to better serve our community and the folks that we um, live with and our neighbors with. And so um, the program that I would like to um, highlight is our Indigenous Math Leadership Camp. And so we have run that program. Um, we just finished our seventh year of math camp. Um, and each year we are expanding on that camp. Um, this year we managed to do two camps um, for two weeks each in length. And so the first one was geared towards grades one to three, kids who are going into grades one to three. Um, and then the second camp was for um, kids who are going into grades four to six. And so it wasn't just a math camp, but we also focused on indigenous language and culture. Um, we also included um, various um, other science activities involved. Um, so we did like 3D printing, we did coding, um, we did all kinds of fun things with the kids. Um, and then to kind of celebrate, we did a bit of back to school shopping um, for the kids where we set up a math camp, where we set up a math store um, where each kid um, earned a certain amount of money um, and then was able to spend that money um, for back to school. And so our Indigenous Math Leadership Camp, um, while the name clearly says that we are inviting Indigenous students to participate, we also um, have non-Indigenous kids, um, a lot of times that's newcomers, and that's really based on the community that we serve, right? We serve a high Indigenous population with newcomer kids. Um, and then we also have just non-Indigenous kids um, participating. Um, and we really welcome that when we embrace um, other non-Indigenous kids to participate because they're learning alongside and they're learning about Indigenous language, they're learning about culture. Um, and I think that's so important to learn together um, because we're creating um, an atmosphere of respect um, and we're teaching them while they're young as well, which is very important to do. For me, a measurement of success for the Indigenous Math Leadership Camp um, is really seeing how engaged the kids are. Um, to me, when they are, you know, upon the end of the camp and when they're asking if they can come back again, if they can come to our spring grade camp, if they can come back next year, um, to me, that signifies that it's had a positive impact in their lives and that they have enjoyed their time with us. So to me, that speaks volumes. Um, and so just kind of getting back to how I mentioned that this was our seventh year. Um, so for the past six years, we had worked um, with kind of one cohort. Um, and every year, they would come back. And so some of those youth who started off as participants ended up coming back as youth mentors. Because within our math camp, we have um, a space for anywhere from five to nine youth leaders um, who are working to as peer mentors for the youth participants. Um, and they're really helpful to the teachers um, and they just help the overall camp. Um, so usually, like in the past, we've had um, 30 to 35 kids involved in math camp for the past um, six years. This year, um, because of the double camps, we were able to host 55 children. 
And so we also were able to have six youth leaders involved. Um, we had four teachers, four Indigenous teachers, and then one EA. So we're very fortunate. We have some incredible um, talent working with us. Um, so the teachers are all teachers with um, experience working, um, whether it's on First Nation communities or in local schools in the area. Um, so this year, for instance, two of our teachers were from Robeso River First Nation, um, and they have over 15 years of teaching experience. One of them is a vice principal, um, and then the other one was a kindergarten teacher um, for more than eight years. So she was perfect to have as a teacher for um, our first group of kids um, for grades one to three. And so our other teachers, um, Robert, he is from Fox Lake, and so he works with um, the kids year long, and he does an incredible job. Um, they're the first three, those ones are First Nation, um, and then we have another teacher who's worked at uh, NYC for over 16 years um, with youth, um, mainly with Indigenous students. From my perspective, I think when I think of Indigenous education, I think of it as education with an Indigenous perspective. Um, so when we're doing math leadership camp, we're incorporating Indigenous culture, Indigenous language. You know, when we think of um, astronomy, we're thinking of the Indigenous stories that um, also relate to what we learn in astronomy. Um, we're uh, doing our best to include the language and teaching about math and how there are math lessons involved um, and just um, ensuring that we have um, educators as well who are highly um, connected to language and culture as well because I think that just adds incredible value to programming um, you know, seeing the kids like at graduation, um, singing in Ojibwe was just um, an incredible moment and, you know, made me so proud. They were, um, you know, they were pronouncing the words really well and, you know, had, that they had practiced and um, yeah, I just think they did a very great job. So one of the other things I think of with Indigenous um, education is language revitalization um, and how important that is. So as a center, um, we do our best to offer language classes um, every single year, both beginner and intermediate classes um, in Ojibwe, but then also we do our best to try off for Cree or Dakota, um, you know, just to be representative of the territory that we are on. Um, and so the more that we can also incorporate it into um, our other programming, the better, right? We're getting kids when they're really young and they're um, just sponges, right? And they can just, um, you know, these will be songs that they'll remember when they're learning songs in the language and they'll remember them for a long time that, you know, they can pass them down and um, it's just a great way to learn the language um, and by incorporating it into like a lot of the programming that we have. Well, I really don't know where I will be in 10 years, but, um, you know, this just really makes me think of, um, you know, a really incredible story of a young girl who, you know, 10 years ago was participating in our programming um, well, maybe not quite 10 years ago, but there was a young girl, she was participating in our programming, um, and then she was recommended to the model school at the Collegiate, which is a high school, um, basically university prep, um, and she recently just graduated as the valid Victorian of the entire Collegiate, so not just the people at the model school. Um, and then she came on as a summer student this summer with us, um, you know, and she worked as a coder. You know, she was teaching kids coding as well as um, doing a lot of leadership for the math camp. Um, and then, you know, just 
this month she's starting uh, university. So when I think of young people like that, I just think how incredible is it that we were able to provide some support to a youth, an Indigenous youth, um, and hopefully have an impact, right? Like um, being able to provide this support for Indigenous youth and, in, and families, we want to see more stories like that for sure. And we do see them. Um, a lot of the young people who are involved in the model school at the collegiate, again, like the university prep, um, there is such a connection between this, that school and the programs here at the Wichuaganak Learning Center um, because often um, the model school is looking to our program facilitators for recommendations for students who would um, be excellent students for the model school. And so those students often, um, you know, they're highly supported throughout their high school and then, you know, most of them do go on um, to university which is an incredible story, right? And I think that there's um, so many other students that we don't know, you know, they're not necessarily going to the model school, but we provided that opportunity for them to also feel at home and to feel comfortable on a university campus, which can feel like a very foreign place for a lot of people. Um, you know, if I think about my own background, um, you know, I grew up on a reserve my whole life, and um, at 17, I ended up going to university. Um, and I think part of the choice in where I went came from, you know, just attending a mini U when I was like, you know, eight years old or something. Um, and so just having that bit of comfort, like it doesn't seem like such a scary place, you know, has an impact. Um, and so. I hope that we're continuing to make that impact on other youth in our community, right? That they're feeling like this is their space just as much as it's anybody else's who's going here.